in my stream and record the rest. Hopefully that'll make it a little better. Okay. Uh, I think any syringes you find, I have two and that's it. Are you fighting Fragment, I think? Yeah. Wait, no, that's not Fragment, that's Brown Geyser. I'll take that. Yeah, probably. Maybe around the ball. That's what I'm thinking, but I could be wrong. I are fighting Fragment West. Welcome to the shop. I've got just the thing for you. Remember who hooked you up? I've got your back. Send to the decoy. Wait, how do I know I'm not the decoy? We can go here and hold the frag team out from Fragment West. Go go on my ping and we hold that team out as zone comes in. Sure. Cause they're pretty far into Fragment West. Just when it's a fight. Only the best for my friend. Uh, son, there's a drop ship somewhere. Uh, I think it's the one in uh, over there. Let's go to. S uh, can you carry that for me, if possible? We can kind of play construction here. Because they're still fighting. So let's take this to find the construction, I think. Then hold that off. Are you guys in a good position? They should still be in zone and we have high ground on them now. Okay, let's take that zip line okay. up and we hold them out. Cause zone two is gonna start hurting. Keeping. Good shit. It's very hard for them to res because it's zone two. I think I'll have to revive. Right that way. Can you come up? Can you come up? As you know, go down, go down, go down. I think we push this team. Cause that zone team can't push us. Enemy over there. I wonder what they found. To my right, to my right, to my right, to my right. On me, on me. Go, go, go in tunnel, go in tunnel. Is he a solo? He might be part of that zone team that somehow rotated out. I 
I think they're underneath. Less than 30 seconds. Rings nearby. I hear footsteps in tunnel. I can't tell if it's multiple or not. I'm gonna try to drop and peek. Guess I just wanna go through tunnel and go to zone because zone's about to come in. Uh, let's go this way. I don't. I don't find that tunnel. It gets really uh, messy. They're fighting over there. We uh, we can kind of play here and hold them out. See you right there. Hit one purple. Go zone, go zone, go zone. Good shit, guys. Oh, team right there, right there, right there. I'm gonna throw a thermite in there. He's on tracks, he's on tracks. Are they fighting another team? Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go in here and try to get an uh, angle on them. I'm gonna try to see what's what's popping over there. Are they choke? They're pushing into uh, choke. Oh, they're over there, Loba. Do you see any? Because if not, we can hold. We, I think that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good spot to hold for this zone. Because it's gonna end around here, so we can hold this for pretty long. We hold this, and then we can hold out any teams that are gonna push us. Because I'm pretty sure zone ends around here, so we can just play for late zone. I got, I'm getting aimed at somewhere. Over there, over there, over there. Ah, uh, it's a bloodhound and I think a crypto. They're nading me out. Good shit, good shit. On me, on me, on me. There's a life on me, on me. On my door, on my door. She's a PK, she's a PK. Cracked. Okay. Evo shield here, level three. All right. 
let's take a look. Okay, so you go for another kind of fad drop here. Um, personally, I would have went to like Epicenter or something. Epicenter is usually not super contested on a drop like this, and it's close to Fragment East and West. So if you went there, you can easily path into Fragment East and West and get some get into the maximum pretty early. That's usually what I tend to do. I, I try to get into the maximum early, especially because a lot of teams, you know, it's, but let, let's imagine that um, a bunch of teams land at Fragment East or West, whatever. Um, they're going to fight each other. They're going to use each other's resources, ammo, stuff like that, and they're probably going to fight pretty early from the drop as well. So when you when you roll up on them from somewhere like Epicenter, you're probably gonna have pretty good shields, decent weapons as well, because there's pretty good loot there. You path in and you come third by him. It should just be free kills as long as you play it properly. So getting those early free kills can be pretty beneficial. Uh, but yeah, you go really far. So actually trying to get into a fight earlier on uh, won't really happen because you're so far from the action. Um, one thing to One thing to point out, I'm pretty sure these are decoy teams. On the on the right there, it looks like a decoy team. I think that's a decoy team as well on the left there. Because of the like, blue trails, you yeah. know? They're all going in a straight line as well. I know so you kind of notice these, but uh, yeah, I think these are decoy teams. So don't worry too much about those. Okay, um, the look and ride thing is still something that I think you need to kind of get the hang of, but uh, other than that, at least you are looking around a little bit, it's better than nothing for now. But you want to be very thorough with your checking, you know, when, you, when you're trying to make it to like Diamond or something, um, you, you probably find that if a team does land on you and they catch you by surprise, it, you, it can kind of mess up your whole, you know, your whole thing. Like if you're doing pretty well and the team lands on you, it can definitely mess you up. It's all about RNG at that point, you know, if they land and they find a shield and a master for something, you know, they can screw you right after drop. Mm-hmm. Right. So a weapon combo like this isn't too bad. Uh, Wingman gives you quite a bit of range, but to be honest, the Vault has insane range anyway, so a bit of a weird one. But yeah, in the past, it, you know, let's imagine the Vault CR99, it'd be a good combo, because you'd have mid-range with the uh, Wingman and close range with the uh, R99, but the Vault has too much range right now, so, you know. i say generally the Master's probably a really good pickup to, you know, synergize well with the Vault. So right now, because the vault has so much range, there's no point really using a wingman with it so much. Just keep an eye of some kind of shotgun, I guess that'd be fine. So you do end up pathing towards fragment a little bit later on, but uh, I think it's so late into the game. I mean, by the time you actually enter capsule, it's like five and a half minutes or so, coming into six minutes when you actually enter. So at this point, you know, the zone's coming in, and most people are already dead or have moved away by now. Right. So yeah, you guys kind of moving in with the zone, you're keeping an eye out for teams that are kind of on the edge of the ring, still got to move in. Definitely a good play, you know, get, being able to get, keep people in the zone. Yeah, it is kind of hard to see, but yeah, you do spot some people out in the zone and try to get some shots on them. The only thing is, um, one thing I... Kind of constantly having the back of my mind here. Just looking at the minimap, the uh, ring isn't even, even visible on the minimap, so the ring is kind of far away. So you wouldn't want to stay here too long if you get too kind of involved in this stuff. You might find that you get kind of screwed by the ring. Yeah. Um, I was a bit worried that that might happen here, but uh, didn't didn't kind of happen. It could have potentially done if a team coming behind you and trapped you in here, but um, luckily you kind of move away. That team, the whoever that was, uh, wasn't much of an issue in the end. So. So yeah, if you move like with a minute to spur, which I would say is, is not too bad. Uh, it lets you get in there, it lets you kind of cover some ground in that time. Um, the the ring is going to become more and more, more important depending on what kind of rank you're in. It you, you can't lose track of the ring when you're in higher ranks. If you do, you're going to get gate kept and you're going to die. So, and sometimes if you are trying to gatekeep a team and you are in the ring as well. So for example, this fight here, um, you're not safe in the ring either. So you, know, you could take a fight with these guys. And when you actually did enter the ring, there were people above you up there on the left. 
So, you know, this team, you know, if it was three of them and they're going to try to fight you, they could have been a bit of an issue as well. So you have to watch over that kind of stuff as well. People are going to be, try to try the same thing on you, you know, you're trying to get keep these guys. Another team could be further ahead actually sitting in the ring. You're trying to get keep these, they hear the shots and then they wait for you and then they attack you as well once you get in the ring. So generally, like, um, to, to to be safer, you'd want to be in the ring before you start gatekeeping. Obviously here, um, I wouldn't say it's too bad in gold, but, uh, you know, going up the ranks, it can be a little more risky. So your goal here is just try to get some damage on some, maybe some downs, and try to stay ahead of the ring so you're not in it. Which you kind of do pretty well. Um, if your teammates fall behind, Paul might help as well, but... Saving saving it for later can be super useful just in case. Let's say you get in the ring here and you get attacked immediately. It could be useful for repositioning your team somewhere else, you know, if you do get caught out. So you guys activate the bridge and it starts moving up. This guy runs away. Um, didn't really see a team on him, so maybe he's regrouping with his team or he's solo. Who knows? But uh, at least, you know, if there was three, three people kind of waiting for you, though, that could have been a bit of a problem. But luckily, there wasn't. Again, rings kind of far and in a not so great spot here. So let's see. I don't think you pull up the map anywhere no, around here. So you don't really get to see the map, I don't think. But yeah, there's a team in the choke. Um, you could go all the way around to the right as well. That could be a way to, you know, avoid possibly fighting these guys. Or all the way around to the left as well. Because they're in front of you in the ring and you do have time. You know, it's going to take a little bit longer to get around. But as long as you, you know, have the time to do so, sometimes it's better to just do that. The team spots you trying to get into the ring and they're ahead of you. They might just wait for you there and not let you in. So yeah, this this other team that was kind of around here when you saw them originally, this kind of vanished. Looks so like it could have been the team on the right that attacked you later on, but yeah, they just kind of vanished for a little bit. So you didn't have the information of where they were and couldn't really go off that too much. Did find a purple shield, which is nice, a little bit damaged. But I, I, it might have been this team here that was kind of... They might have gone for the package over there or something like that, and that's why they was over to the right. All right, let me just go back to... All right, so from this frame, the building that you're in um, has a sloped roof, which if you're getting attacked from somebody, like, from where these guys are at the moment, you know, over to the west, uh, the slope of the roof actually benefits you a lot because you can kind of sit on and head glitch on the roof here. Um, and you, you've got a pretty solid position to fight these guys from. Like standing in a doorway, for example, and trying to shoot, um, they can hit you just as well as you know you can hit them. So it doesn't really benefit you much. Um, it might be a good idea to reposition on the roof or something. You know, If you're going to take a position, for example, if you were going to hold this building or whatever, um, you, know, you pop your cell, you move to the roof immediately, you'd already be up there. Uh, chilling, you'd probably be able to spot these guys out easier as well. Alternatively, use your phase to get on the roof, and then you've got a really good spot to kind of shoot people from. But obviously, if you can avoid using it, definitely avoid using it until you really do need it. I would have gone for cells here just because it's around about the same time, and uh, you might need your battery for later. But yeah, you get nade spam now. So yeah, you're kind of forced to chill in the corner or drop down because, you know, there's so many nades getting kind of tossed at you. And now you cannot go to the roof. If you was on the roof before, you might be able to punish these guys as they moved up on you. But they're already here now. And you can see the barrel of that gun. That's obviously a peacekeeper. So um, a whole thing, like I said before, about Mastiff is similar with the weight, with the uh, peacekeeper. Here. You don't have any sort of shotgun. So if you try to fight this guy, he can drop you a lot faster than you can drop him. You know, and he can also abuse peeking and shooting as well or jiggle peeking whatever uh, either work pretty well he can come out of cover blast you go back into cover because you can't really trade with him very well so it's, it's pretty scary to fight this this guy so i think your strategy here was to hold the door your teammate comes from the side and shoots him in the back and then you open the door and try to you know attack him as well maybe that was your strategy it could have worked out pretty well if your teammates did kind of follow up um and, and they acted a lot sooner because he was kind of sat around waiting for him for a bit but yeah, you got to be pretty careful. For example, when you walk out, um, you'd want to wait for this guy to shoot first because it looks like he's charging up and waiting for somebody to come. Um, he does blast your teammate, but he's already got another shot ready for you when you actually peek out. So it'd be best to kind of sit. Try and get pause on this. 
So you open the door, uh, you do close it again. I would have left the door open unless the guy is trying to like get to you and just kind of sit um, on the door like with it open, using it to block this guy because the bullet's not going to go through the door as long as it's between you. And if he just starts trying to come around the door, you just go back inside or something. But yeah, you need to wait for him to shoot. And remember, the, the re-chamber on the Peacekeeper is pretty fast with a purple bolt, so you have to be pretty quick. Um, you kind of when you walk out he, he has enough time to bolt it back you know he's basically got another shot ready once you appear so you get blasted as well so yeah at this point you both took a, a pretty big peacekeeper hit and you're both pretty low just from one guy one guy has done this to you so and you haven't really got much damage onto him as you can see when you hit him he's still got his purple shield you could pop a bat right now on the door just before his teammates come in especially when lifeline is down definitely bat on the door right now that's probably your best bet and if they chase you, try to like run up the stairs, try to get on the roof or something, pop a battery. Trying to fight when low, um, it's going to make it pretty tough for you. But yeah, when they have something like a, a package weapon, it really does ruin your chances of having a good like fair fight with them. Because any any sort of care package weapon um, improves their odds of winning by a lot. So you have to be uh, you have to be pretty careful with this. Sometimes just abusing positioning. For example, if you guys were in the building, like. You know, use the stirs or something to your advantage. That could have been pretty useful. Um, you'd be able to maybe poke with the wingman and get, you know, a little bit of damage down onto them for the little gaps in the floor there. You can see that you can actually see a little bit of downstairs from there. Um, and, and stuff like railings, for example, that are right in front of you, they might block a good amount of a peacekeeper shot or, you know, other damage as well. But yeah, they, they can give you some sort of protection as they try to push up here. Like, from the enemy's perspective, they have to look in so many different directions as they come up the stairs, and there's nowhere for them to actually run. You know, like they can't um, high bound any sort of cover or anything. They can only go back down stairs as like they're a means of escaping you shooting at them. So like being up here is a good spot to kind of fight back from. You'd need your team to kind of help you with that, and if they don't fight, uh, it, you know, in the building, it's going to make it a lot harder. Using stuff like, you know, the, the fact that it's going to be hard for them to get to you when you're upstairs. If they climb up, you'll actually hear them climb up the side of the building as well. So you'll be able to punish them if they try to do something like that. But yeah, um, you have to be really careful with this guy and a peacekeeper. You, you, the fact that you don't have a shotgun makes it, this a lot harder. So that's why I'm kind of, you know, I mentioned before the whole master thing. Um, if you don't have a shotgun and they have a shotgun, it's going to be pretty tough. For example, if you had a master, if you could uh, maybe peek out and blast at him. You know, sit on the edge of the door, wait for him to shoot, and then you walk out, blast him, go back into cover. If you landed a good hit right there, you could follow up with another one and finish him off, and then go in the building, bat up, and there you go. But yeah, with your weapons, it's going to be hard to put out a decent like, amount of damage, you know, without taking too much in return. He can trade with you a lot harder than you can trade with him, and he can do it very quickly as well. As soon as you walk out, boom. So shotguns are pretty scary you, you've got to be careful about getting blasted like this you just got to keep your distance if possible because you're all kind of you know chilling around this building um it's up to you whether or not you take this fight you don't have to take the fight you could just you know portal out and escape you don't you don't really need to take it plus you might get thirded as well considering your position on the map so let's go back to the start of the fight so you go for the quick sell straight away a really good stuff you want to be ready to fight immediately just in case Right, you come up into the building, pretty good spot, you know, but you want to be on the roof. So I, I would climb on the roof right about now. And you probably, you probably take a little bit of poke damage as you did so, even with those guys being back there. Um, you had a little bit of time before there was like multiple people on the left side there aiming at you. So could have probably had enough time to climb up. Now from the roof, you'd be able to punish their movements quite a lot more. Um, the thing is, because you went inside here, um, they can just uh, kind of toss loads of grenades in here and force you like out of a position where you can actually punish them from you know, moving. So once they toss loads of grenades in here, they can then push up on you. So it'd be better to be on the roof, and then it's very hard for them to nade you up there. Um, there's all sorts of positions you can use. They're pretty open up there as well, so you have a lot of freedom of movement. Um, when it comes to fighting, if you can actually shoot them through the doorway here, who's going to use this doorway to like shoot them from they can see you just as well as well as you can see them there is a little bit of a railing in the way so maybe that'll take a few bullets but um head glitching on the roof is your best way to kind of take this fight not only that the roof gives you really good sight lines of everywhere so you would have spotted them out as well as when you was up there so yeah try to take roof positions in especially on roofs where they're slanted in a, in a way that would be beneficial to you so if there's a team on the right here because the roof slants like this to the left um and on the right side as well because of the way this slant is very beneficial to you to fight from the roof here, you can head glitch pretty effectively from here. 
Your teammates, unfortunately, because they was positioned like below you and didn't have a line of sight on them, if they was also on the roof, um, or at least two of you on the roof, you'd be able to punish these guys a lot for trying to move through the open. They're trying to get close because they have stuff like peacekeepers and stuff, you know. They, once they get close with that thing, if you don't have a shotgun, they're guaranteed to win as long as they don't miss the shots. So, yeah, once these nades come in, this is where things start to go bad because you can't now punish them for moving through the open. They're also not in the zone, I don't think, from where they currently was, so they decide to, like, push you to take your position away from you and get into the zone at the same time. So, yeah, um, sometimes it's just down to what kind of weapons you run. You know, if you run something like this, your ability to put out damage in a quick quick period, kind of like the Peacekeeper does, the Mastiff can trade decently well if you, you know, if you land a good hit when they're bolting back or reloading or uh, you abuse cover well enough, you might be able to take advantage of this. Do you know what Jiggle Peeking is? Kind of, yeah. Right. So you'd be you'd possibly able to use it on this door. Basically, all it is, if you had a shotgun, it's, it's, it'd be perfect for this. Um, but basically, you walk out, and then you deal damage, like, before you can even see them. So, for example, you can use a door because it's got, you know, holes in it to see through it. You can see through the little window a bit, right? So you could jiggle peek pretty well on the, this door. When it's open, you stand on the edge, um, and when you're ready to take a shot, you basically walk out just for enough time for you to shoot, and then you walk back in so that you wouldn't wait to line up the shot or anything like that. You're basically just out there just to take the shot, and then you walk back out. So it's, it's very, very quick on his screen. He won't have basically any time to react to it. Um, so it's, it's kind of a way you'd be able to fight back here. You might be able to use the same thing with the wingman or the vault, you know, to dance around on the edge of the door and try to put out damage. You wouldn't, like, run straight out and try to put out damage. If you do something like that, you're going to get peacekeeping and hit really hard. So jiggle peeking on the edge of the door could help. The only kind of issue is if he walks around and takes that position away from you, you'd have to walk back in and close the door just so he doesn't have that ability to do that. But you want him to be on the left. Um, and not run to the right, you know, in front of the door, you want him to be on the left side, which he just kind of remained in that position, as you can see. Most of the time, he is back there, so you can kind of take advantage of that. Um, yeah, but yeah, not having a shotgun here makes it a lot harder. But basically, with jiggle peeking, you just you sit very on the on the very edge of cover. Um, you peek out just for enough time for you to take the shot, and then you go back in. You you probably won't even see the target in your right sights or whatever, or whatever sights you have. You won't even see them on your target for long enough for you to actually, you know, register it. It's more of, you know where they are, um, your muscle memory would bring your aim to him, fire, and then you go back into the cover immediately. Um, on their screen, it will happen so fast, they won't really have any time to actually react to it. It'll be like 0 0.5 seconds or something, so they won't really be very prepared for that. They'll probably still be trying to line up a shot, and you've already gone back into cover. So it can be pretty useful. Um, the only kind of downside to that is you have to kind of know... Um, you have to know your muscle memory pretty well. You have to know um, where, where he is. You have to kind of know... Um, how, how to take that shot straight away as soon as you pop out so you have to i say line it up behind the door and then kind of remember where he was walk out him go back in um that's a good way to deal with somebody like this he has no cover so if you you know you abuse this door as your cover you might have a bit of a chance to win this fight alternatively like i said using the building using the stairs stuff like that with your team could have been super useful as well um, unfortunately your team doesn't really benefit much from being indoors because you have team composition you know um, but it could have been helpful just regardless because you're kind of upstairs, you know, and it's hard for them to kind of get up there unless they have tons of nades, in which case that'd be kind of annoying. If they just threw loads of nades, you just go onto the roof or something. But yeah, this team was uh, pretty decent. You know, they had like uh, 20 bombs and 4Ks and stuff, so it could have been tough anyway. I would say um, you just kind of want to play your rings maybe more safer. You saw a team over here, so you know there's a team kind of in the area. Um, and if you, you know, because you actually know somebody's in this area, you want to position yourself to be ready to fight at all times. So, like, the roof, for example, is where you need to be. Um, and the new ring is okay, but you're on the edge. So you could think about repositioning somewhere else a little bit later. Um, like, if you had a... It would be nice if you had somebody that can help you get to the top of Thermal, like a Pathfinder. Unfortunately, you don't. But, yeah, that'd be a good spot right on the top of uh, Thermal. You can basically see everything. You can attack who you want. But, yeah, no Pathfinder here. Yeah. Um, alternatively, the houses on the bottom left are a pretty good spot because you can pretty easily get back into the new zone, you know, if you know where the zone is, which I think you did. It's kind of near the donut building, so you should be able to get through, you know, to where people are at. So if you looped all the way around the right side to the bottom side where those buildings were at, could have gone there as well. Um, it would have made it kind of easy to rotate in because if, you, if the um, ring's going to be kind of where that package is, 
you have to go across the zip lines and you can get punished pretty hard for that as well so moving all the way around sometimes sometimes you just got to take the um the longer route in order to get in more safely um and just kind of play the ring uh, i say in this case you didn't have a ton of kills you only have one, one assist in this one uh, but you do you have positive one point so surviving is pretty useful you probably get some kills near the end as well um but i will i will mention some one thing when it comes to you know ranks um try to just take fight try to be smart about your fights you know don't just um take any fight that you can for example you can fight the, these guys back here you you can gatekeep them but you're not safe as well if there's a team waiting for you on the edge of the ring um you can you know die to those guys so it'd be safer to move into the ring and then wait for them to come to you and if it's kind of safe and you don't think there's anybody else behind you then you take the fight you taking the fight here for example there could be a team waiting for you try to gatekeep you you know they hear you shooting here on the edge then they you know gatekeep you instead so try to be smart about your plays um you definitely want to bear in mind like what could happen in the future you know if you take this fight with this team is somebody going to be waiting for me that, that, that kind of stuff that will make a big difference um you know when you're playing against better players any sort of mistakes you make um they, they're, they're going to punish them a lot harder than some other players would you know at the lower ranks if, for example if you get yourself find yourself in a position where you're forced to run from the ring because it's right at your back you can't really fight back so if there's people waiting for you you know they know that you're going to be running from the ring and you don't really have time to fight back or you're going to take ring damage as well um especially if you're low that can be even worse so yeah you can get punished for stuff like this so uh you could have easily moved in just to play it safe but yeah you guys you know try to take that fight there so yeah you, you will get punished for mistakes like that at high rank so bear that in mind um one other thing as well taking fights uh, like where you have a, a, a pretty visible advantage over them for example if you have a good position over them or you know you can gatekeep them and you're in a good spot already stuff like that um or maybe they're fighting another team and you can third buy try to look for advantages like that um this game is all about advantages for example let's say your team's just chilling you spot a guy you shoot him you break his shield you now have an advantage over that team so you can then decide what to do if you have an advantage in most cases you you know keep the pressure on them you keep keep going at it so if you have an advantage like a broken shield on one guy you can advance up and try to push the team and try to finish them off because obviously if he carries if he does fight you um he's going to be low so you can finish him off pretty quickly if not then he's going to be healing and out of the fight so you can kill his other two teammates you know as a three you hang up on the other two uh last guy would have healed up by then and he just finished him off as well because he would, didn't participate in the fight you know what i mean yeah so yeah uh, that's kind of the pretty big factors when it comes to progressing through you know if you've never been able to get to diamond yet there's probably some pretty good reasons for that you have to be and to be honest you are pretty smart about a lot of the things you do um there are some thought going into where you decide to go and position and stuff like that which is good um but I, I think maybe some of the stuff that I mentioned, for example, sometimes taking the, lo the longer route to get in or an alternative route, even if it means you have to go through the zone to, you know, reposition, stuff like that, um, you'll be forced to do that sometimes. And if you don't make the right decision, let's say you, you're too scared to go into the zone because you just don't want to take ring damage or whatever, um, you know, kind of near the train station that you, when, that, when you was in that game and there was a team on the left, well, there was only one guy, but we wasn't exactly sure if it was a full team or what. If you were to portal to the right, like kind of what you did on the other platform if that was a full team of three and there was good players they would have already been making the way over to that side of the platform so when you portal there they would be above you and they just you would have no cover so they'd just punish you for that you know mm -hmm. so it would be safer to go to the left or um go through the zone and portal around there they probably won't expect you to go through the zone like that so that th those sort of players are going to make pretty big differences you know as you work your way up um I, I, to be honest, though, the, the main thing is with this, you know, if I'm going to coach rank, for example, is to see you in your rank that you're kind of struggling with. Unfortunately, we're only in gold right now, so platinum would be the rank that you want to focus on the most. So it's, it's kind of different, though, when it comes to the people you're up against, you know, uh, the amount of third party that happens. It's very different when you go to each rank. So you're going to get third party a lot in platinum. So when you take a fight, I, I usually would, um, if you want to play it safe, I wouldn't take a fight with someone directly. So let's say you land and there's a team nearby and you fight each other you're probably going to get third party so it might not be worth taking it especially if you know that there's another team landing somewhat close by so i'll use let's save see if i can see the map here so i'll use this map as an example so let's say you decided to land at skyhook right um and there was a total of three teams there you're one of them and there's two enemy teams 
Um, you decide to land somewhere at Skyhook. Now, because there's another team somewhere, it's either you let them fight and then you join in, or if you fight one of those teams, you're going to get third fight and you're going to die. So for that reason, uh, you would want to do your best to avoid fighting in Skyhook. You know, there's only two teams there. You want them to fight each other the whole you fight, because if you decide to fight one of those teams, third fight. So don't fight them. Do your best to, like, literally do your best to avoid them. Um, and if they do start fighting, then you can go in. Uh, keep an eye on the kill feed. Just listen out for certain weapons. So if you know that someone's shooting a hemlock nearby or whatever, you see a hemlock in the kill feed, somebody's not, because it might be that guy, you know, he's killed somebody. So keep an eye out for that sort of thing. That's when you third party, when you start seeing people go down. Because sometimes um, a team will realize they're being third party and then they'll disengage from the fight and you'll run in and you'll find yourself in between everything. So you got to be a bit careful about that. Um, sometimes third party can kind of backfire. I'd say for the most part, third partying is super beneficial for the guys that are doing it. Um, but you, it can sometimes backfire if you're not fully aware of the situation. So if you third party and then the, you find it disengaging, Sometimes you can find yourself, oh, now I'm between two teams and I'm being third party because, <laughs> you know, you've positioned yourself in a way where now both teams are focused on you rather than each other, you know. Yeah. So most of the time, if there's people like, kind of landing close to you, you know, lots of teams in the same uh, area and they can very quickly react to a fight and then come and turn up, uh, don't take fights with teams if that's going to happen. So like I said, in Skyhook, if there's three teams there, you're one of them. Um, let the other team fight first. If they don't fight, then just don't fight at all because without a doubt, there's a team close by and you're going to get a third party. And that's where the looking around thing comes in. Well, you know, I kind of went over it a few times. Um, looking around gives you all the information you need about where people are going to be and how many people you're dealing with and what kind of decision, decisions you're going to make based off that. So if you know that there's two, team, two enemy teams there, you definitely don't want to fight any of them. Uh, you got to make sure that they fight first and then you join. It's it's just unfortunately third party is a major problem in this game. You don't get any, you don't get rewarded whatsoever. So let's say um, the the other team is fighting each other, right? They're fighting each other, um, and you you're starting to roll up on them. You're you, you're coming in to to buy them now. Now they're they're going to be low. You know they're going to have the shields possibly broken or low. They're going to be low health stuff like that. They don't get any sort of healing or anything. So. They might be able to shield swap, but if they're missing big big chunk of health and they've got to pop a med kit and you're already pretty close, you know, they're kind of screwed. So for that reason, um, you know, that's why third party is so beneficial. I think they should add something in really to give something back for people that, are, you know, they just finished a squad, maybe a heal or something would be nice. But yeah, uh, there's nothing like that. So that's why third party, you come in at a major advantage over them. Because they're probably low by the time you get in there. So, uh, especially if they're already still in the fight with each other, you can kind of pick your fights as well to decide who to, you know, fight and who to not fight. But in general, if you do have the information of how many people are in the area and who's fighting who, just remember that if you're third party in, uh, attack the team that's strongest because you'll bring the overall numbers down. For example, if let's say there's a team on the right and a team on the left, if the left team has got one guy knocked and the other team has got three members alive, focus the team with three because you'll bring down the total numbers of people you got to deal with. Um, if you attack the weakest team, they're going to get destroyed, and then the other team will have three members. So now, you know, you don't really have an advantage over them. You can't equal numbers. So think of it like that as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of strategy when it comes to ranked rather than just straight out skill. Obviously, some skill helps, but um, yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved. Uh, most of the time, it's, I'd say, position yourself in the ring. Always keep track of the ring. Don't get caught out in a bad spot and then have to go through a choke point or something. So keep, as soon as you see that the ring has changed, check the map, um, decide what path you're going to take to get there, and try to pick a... like You can go through a choke point if it's very early. It's probably pretty safe. But if you have to go through it very late with like you know 30 seconds or less to spur, um, it's likely that another team is doing the same thing. You know They're really late, haven't been paying attention, and then they have to go through the same, same choke, choke point, and then you, they're ahead of you or something. You, you never want a team to be ahead of you if you're trying to move into the ring. So with that in mind, always try to position yourself earlier rather than later. So if you're shooting people in that corner building on Fragment West, what if a team you know were to wait in one of the tunnels for you? You know, for example, on Train Yard side, team waits for you there. You you're trying to get past them. You, they're just gonna kind of hold you in there. So that kind of stuff you really want to watch out for. People at higher skill levels will take advantage of mistakes you make of you know taking shots at people. Um, you know, they hear your shots and like, okay, there's a guy obviously in Fragment West, so I'm gonna wait here and attack him when he comes towards me. You know, just try to think. You know, when you do when you are shooting at people or whatever, even even sometimes firing off a few shots, 
gives you position away and lets people make a decision based off that. So they hear you, you know, taking a fight or shooting at people. Or in, in your case, you were shooting at people in the zone, and you was really far from the zone. If you stayed there too long, eventually the ring would be a problem. And any teams that know you're there, they could also be a problem because they decide to hold you in the zone. So that's of the mind. Um, I say in general, um, I, your gameplay was okay. Uh, aim wasn't too bad overall. What kind of uh, DPI and sensitivity are you working with? Uh, 800 DPI, and let me look at my sense real quick. I have it pulled up. I think it's like, I want to say two. That sounds two. Ac accurate, but it might be lower. 1.6. Okay, uh, that's not too bad. You're in a pretty decent spot overall. What's your ADS most sensitive scene? Let me a look. Mouse controller, ADS. One. Okay. So one is like very slightly slower than hit fire speed. So I'm not sure if you know that. If you wanted it to be the same speed, so hit fire and aim in down sight, you set it to 1.2. Um, up to you though. Obviously, you might not be super used to it, but if you want them to be the same speed for consistency's sake, um, that change might be useful to you. What we will do though is we'll probably change some settings. So we'll start with gameplay. Gameplay, okay. Uh, crosshair damage feedback. I recommend you turn that off because it's not necessary and it is kind of beneficial to turn it off. So this is like hit markers. You know when you hit someone, it shows like an X. Yeah. And it also shows like a shield icon on the bottom of your screen. Not really necessary, and the X actually kind of obstructs your view a little bit. So we turn that off because it's not necessary. When you have damage numbers turned on, in which case you do turn on stacking, um, when you hit someone, it just kind of combines the numbers and shows damage, doesn't it? So let's say you hit a 32 on a blue shield. Um, it will show, like, you know, the, the damage number 32 and then next to it, a blue shield. So you can still tell what level shield you're hitting and stuff like that. So there isn't really any downside to the crosshair damage feedback being turned off. Um, minimap rotation, I recommend you turn that on. Just right there. Any map rotation, yeah. Um, yeah, everything yeah. else seems fine in here. Um, I was kind of curious earlier, like, you know, when you got hit when you're trying to loot that body, I, I thought you might have had taken damage close to that box when you turned on, but you don't, which is good. I'm not sure what the hop up, hop up thing is. I've done, I haven't really hop up, hop up. <laughs> oh, I haven't really seen to... that option before. Determined... No, it's because when you pick up a hop up, it tells you what it is. I was looking for that setting for so long, that's how I find yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, that's a new set, and I hadn't seen that, but yeah, uh, that just displays information about what it does, which is dumb. I'm glad they let you turn it off. So yeah, turning it off is probably the best thing. Uh, mouse and keyboard. So yeah, uh, I say sensitivity and DPI wise, you're actually in a very good spot. So I'd say most of the time I usually adjust this, but in your case, I'd say you're actually fine. So yeah, yeah, just keep up with it. Have you done aim training and stuff before? Yeah, I have um, aim labs and Kovax. Right, which one do you normally use? I I used to use Kovacs a lot when I played Overwatch competitively, and then I mm. switched to Aim Labs because it's just overall better. It's so much more. Okay, um, I'd say there's a lot more options on what kind of scenarios you can try on Kovac, but they are improving Aim Labs quite a lot. Like they're you know trying to they're trying to incorporate a lot of the things that the other Aim trainers have in there and trying to become better as well. I guess in the pro process and they are free so you know anyone can pick it up um yeah. let's go to the top let's see what you have so you have crouch hold on nine i guess that's a mouse button yeah i have a um i have a is it uh, an mmo type mouse with a ton yeah. of buttons on the side yeah i have a one through yeah. 12 numpad so it's just like right there for me mm. super nice so the problem with those type of mice they have too many buttons on for like a shooter game so your thumbs is going to be kind of sat uncomfortably on a bunch of uh you know, number buttons. <laughs> uh, usually, like, a sh an ideal shooter mouse only has a couple buttons on the side. So, you know, uh, two, two mouse side buttons, usually, like, crouch and melee or something like that. So those are fine side buttons to use. Um, so, because it, it's on a mouse button, it's actually not too bad of a binding. Um, I would also probably assign maybe control in there unless you use it. Do you use control for anything else? Uh, I don't think so, no. I can add it to the key number two. Yeah, just put it in there. So it can be maybe, I'm not sure how used to crouching in combat you are, but usually like I have most side button as my crouch as well. Um, but I use control like when I'm in the middle of the fight, you know, in combat basically. I use control for that because basically you can, you can have all your fingers on WASD and your pinky sits on control. So you can actually crouch with that even though you've got full movement at the same time, you know? Yeah. 
if you've got to hold down right click and hold down a, a mouse button and focus on you know aiming and all that stuff it could be maybe a bit too much unless you're used to that perhaps but yeah um i say the control can be useful for like you know in, in combat crouching basically um scroll up to aim down sight hold and toggle and melee and stuff like that i want to see what kind of stuff you've got set up there so yeah melee yeah. buttons default which i wouldn't recommend uh aim down sight is toggle i uh, also wouldn't recommend that so uh, i switched to aim down sight hold and melee needs to be some kind of mouse side button so aim down sight just switch that to hold so just right click on it yeah um, melee, we'll, we'll keep V for now, just while you get used to it, but key to assign it to some kind of mouse side button. You've got, you've got quite a lot of buttons to choose from. So just some, some kind of mouse side button. The reason for that is V is hard to press and you also have to release your movement keys to do it. So if you, if your hand's usually sat on WASD, like round about there, you have to basically take a finger off D maybe to reach the V. Not really something you want. So assign it to some kind of mouse side button instead. When I think about how I hold it, my thumb's already always on V and space. So I guess it's not that big of an issue. Cause I have my pointer middle finger on W, you know, typical WAC. My thumb's on my space bar and V when I play. So I guess it's not that big of an issue. Um, It's a bit of an awkward button overall, but if you, you know, kind of fine with that, you can kind of press it with your thumb. Um, so it, I guess it's not too bad if you're used to that. I, I'd never reach to my thumb to press <laughs> something like that. So yeah, I have it on a mouse side button just to make it easy because you can basically do that instantly because your, your your finger, like at least for me anyway, because my mouse is, doesn't have a bunch of, you know, like 12 buttons on it or whatever. Uh, for me, my, my thumb basically sits directly below where my mouse side buttons are or maybe on top of it sometimes. Um, but yeah, I can basically just reach up my thumb just a little tiny bit and press the button. So my melee can come out instantly. So let's say you get someone low, punch just to finish them off. Sometimes if it takes you a bit of time to actually reach over and find the button, they might have moved far enough away so you can't melee them anymore and you can't finish them off, you know? They might get a phase off as Wraith or something and get away. So yeah, having quick access to melee is definitely a good swap. So mm -hmm. could be worth considering. Um, let's see what you have for grenade because usually you do a little swap there with some of the dines. I did. I moved my. Uh, I used. I moved my um, character utility because I bought a new keyboard recently. And I don't have function keys at all. Like I have function keys, but I had the function and the number. So I changed my. This used to be K, and it was super awkward to reach my thumb to K, and J is a lot closer for me because I use H for other stuff. So I right. Use J. Uh, Just I like. The quote. You should assign the equip wheel to F1. That's the default binding. It's in an okay spot. Um, might be, unless you use F1, which I doubt. Most, the default binding for equips is F1, which is actually not too bad. H is kind of far on the, on the right side of your keyboard, you know? You want to kind of keep your key bindings on the left side of your keyboard for the most part, because reaching all the way to the right is kind of, kind of sucks. So definitely consider that. You know, if you you want your beat bindings to be in a reasonable spot to reach. For example, it would be if you're gonna have a utility action all the way on J, that can kind of suck a little bit. So you can put it back on H and just use uh, F1 as your equips instead, something like that. Mm -hmm. I would say H is not ideal though; it's still really far away. But um, you know, unless you can figure something else to work there. I mean, some people don't use the caps button. You can use the caps for things as well. Don't know what you might want to use it for. Maybe toggle fire mode or something or. Uh, talking game you know there's, there's a lot of options you can use there but yeah um, i would remove the cycle weapons key binding because we're going to probably assign jump to scroll wheel down as well so just right click to remove it mm -hmm. do, you, do you use that to switch weapon by the way sometimes i i forgot i forgot if right. i use i kind of switched between that and this because like i have mm. a one two and my thumb always sits on like one I don't, yeah. the reason I use 159 for the most part is because it's like diagonal for me. And so it's super easy to switch between those. And so like I always yeah. have my thumb on one, and then one and two is pretty easy. But I know it's easier to B-hop on the yeah. thing. So jump, jump in key two, assign it to scroll wheel down. I'm gonna do this, add it to that, as a secondary one. Just in case. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's a really good bind because obviously B hopping, um, zip line bouncing around, you know, can't really do it so much now because they nerfed it. You can only jump on a zip line three times before you fall yeah, off. Yeah, it's so annoying. Still is useful though. You could jump on it, turn around and fly straight over the guy's head. You know, it's still pretty useful. Um, wall jumping, it's useful for that as well. 
Uh, it has a lot of uses. I would say I use it in pretty much every single game, um, and I bunny hop in pretty much every single game as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty useful stuff. I would definitely get into learning using that for most of your jumps. Uh, I'd say I use space for like in combat fighting. Same with control as well. I have buttons for you know jumping and encroaching and all that kind of stuff on on my mouse. Um, but I tend to use the actual keyboard buttons in combat, you know, space or control, because I can easily rest my fingers in certain positions so that they're basically always there. Um, so in combat, it's, it's generally easier for me to just use that. I'm kind of more used to it as well. Um, and I tend to use the crouch button more for getting around the map, uh, you know, my mouse. And the scroll wheel, I use that for all sorts of things, but in combat, space is usually what I use to jump. Mm -hmm. We'll take a bit, a little bit again used to, but it'll be worth it in the end. I uh, definitely practice some of the jumps with the scroll wheel, like in the firing range, for example. There's a vertical zip line on the far right. Um, basically, it, it, there's some good jumps you can do where you can actually, you know, on King's Canyon, there's zip lines that are very close to buildings. You can yeah. kind of take advantage of zip line jumping. So all you got to do is E and then scroll wheel immediately after. So as soon as you attack to the zip line, so as soon as you press that E, scroll wheel immediately. You can actually launch yourself on top of a roof with that. And it's very quick access to like a rooftop. Um, you can use Pathfinder zip lines the same way. If the bot, like let's say the pole of the zip line is close by, you can just e scroll wheel, launch yourself up onto something. Pretty useful stuff. And obviously vertical zip lines as well. You could bounce around on those and make yourself harder to hit. Uh, useful in, in like market on Kings Canyon. Uh, balloon towers have the same thing. So there are some uses to that. I would definitely you know play around in the firing range to get used to things. Um, are you kind of aware of how recall patterns work in this game? Have you kind of learned yeah. any of them in particular? Yeah, I'm really good at the like flatline. I'm pretty good at Havoc. The new Havoc one's super easy. R99, mm -hmm. of course, is just like, the easiest one to learn. Like R301, basically like all the recall patterns now are basically the same. Very little changes. Like, mm. So I'm pretty used to it. And like I played a lot of CSGO, Valorant, and Tactical Shooters. So, like knowing recoils is something I just pick up really fast on. Right. Um, so, do you actually know how to learn them properly? For example, you know, uh, using bullet holes to... Yeah. You can shoot into a wall, for example. All right, yeah. So you just you just turn, like, impact marks on high or something. You can just use walls to learn where the bullets, you know, they... Oh, basically, um, one thing I will mention, if a gun uses a barrel stabilizer, you might have to learn it quite a bit more because, obviously... It reduces recoil significantly with each level so they might take a little bit more time to learn certain weapons with barrels but um the, the, I, I can see kind of a nerf to vault coming they probably will change the recoil yeah. so that might be uh, worth kind of relearning it once they do do that so turn on impact mark shoot a wall play around with the different barrel stabilizers as well to see how the recoil handles with those and yeah just in general that's what you want to do with your weapons learn the recoil pattern by spraying to a wall then practice on dummies and targets in there and do your best to kind of stay on target and obviously the aim trainers are super useful i'd, I'd say long term the aim trainers are what's going to do you the most good um uh, do you kind of do it on a regular basis aim training or is it something you do kind of every kind, now and again kind of now and again because like i like for like for me I like playing the game more to learn my aim, but then if I'm like having like a particular like bad session, I just go hop on the aim trainer like, like in terms of aim, and I just kind of go like aim train for like an hour and then go back on before I. Mm. Right. So... I also play um. It's not you know not an aim trainer per se, but I play a lot of Osu because I'm a used to be a big rhythm gamer. And right. Which is basically an aim trainer, and I play that very regularly, so I think that also helps weirdly enough um i wouldn't say it's a aim trader per se but it, it, it will help with like maybe reaction time a bit and um you know a little bit with flicking and stuff like that but overall um it just has some benefits but i wouldn't say as much as like an aim trainer does. yeah because it, it like for example if you were trying to improve your flicking it's not going to be major majorly improved by using some like also the reason for that is uh flick aiming is used like um hitting very small targets you know in the name trainer mm -hmm. so they tend to be quite large in osu so you know flicking is generally hitting a very small target so, yeah you shoot one target a very small target appears somewhere else it, you have to be pretty precise with it you don't have to be with osu you see mm -hmm. so it has some benefits but it's not quite as good um but yeah i would definitely kind of stick to the aim training stuff especially if you don't feel like your aim is as consistent and reliable as you want it to be and it could be useful for learning certain weapons as well, like the wingman, for example, if you feel like you're not very consistent with it. Now, there is some strategy to using some weapons, for example, with the wingman. 
Um, it does fire kind of slow, so you have to make sure you make your shots count. So predict what the the enemy you know player is doing. I'd say using it in close range is probably going to be the hardest part um, because the movement is so fast in close range. A distance isn't quite as bad. Um, but in general, a distance as well with a wingman, you have to lead your shots. So you have to figure out what the movement is doing, then fire basically ahead of them so they walk into it. And that distance changes, you know, the bullet drop's going to change quite a lot depending on distance. So if they're really far away, it's quite a lot of bullet travel time to actually uh, compensate for as well. So you have to bear that in mind. Um, it will be quite hard to hit people at long range with, with let's say, a one times wingman or something. Not only can you not see them very well, but, you know, trying to line up a shot on someone that's so far away, you know, figuring out what the movement's doing and stuff like that is going to be very difficult. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's usually about bullet travel time, predicting enemy movement, stuff like that. Don't just rush your shots. Like, it's better to take your time, line them up, and figure out what's going on rather than just spam. Because some people do do that, and they end up missing quite a lot of those shots. So try to take your time with it. Same with the Mastiff as well. Uh, aim down sight, make sure you line up the shot, then take take the shot. Don't just rush and hit fire as, as fast as you can just to try to max out the fire rate because it's better to land your shots and be slower than be really fast but miss and be inconsistent with it, you know? Mm-hmm. That was one of the mistakes I made with the Peacekeeper in the past. Um, I used to kind of aim down sight and take my time with it. Then I started rushing it and like trying to flick aim and stuff like that. And I'd be really, really inconsistent with it. Someone could be right in front of me and I'd just miss like several shots and get myself killed. So I started slowing it down again, aiming down sight with it. Um, and yeah, just taking your time and, and lining, lining shots up makes a huge difference. So make sure, you know, if you feel like you're inconsistent with certain weapons, maybe you have to slow it down a little bit. And sometimes um, your own movement can be kind of messing you up as well. If your movement's too fast for your own aim, that can also mess you up as well. If you're crouch spamming, for example, you got to really do a lot of uh, compensation for that distance. You know, someone's kind of far away. you got to remember when you crouch, your aim gets pulled down. So you're going to have to correct that by aiming up, you know. So but that's kind of stuff in mind when you are taking your fights. I didn't really see a lot of crouch spamming with your particular gameplay, so it might not affect you quite as much. But, you know, if you're in a close-range fight with somebody, it can be pretty beneficial. The, for some reason, the devs don't even like crouch spamming. They think it shouldn't be in the game. <laughs> so there must be something up with it that uh, makes it so good. So uh, did you ever watch any of Asu play back in the past when he used to play Apex? Yeah, I watched Asu. I still watch a lot of the current pros. And, like, I've watched almost every competition and all that. Uh mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, I'm definitely, like, I remember what Asu's movement got, and definitely I picked up a lot of it. Uh, I remember certain plays, literally, like, the movement where you're, like, you climb a wall. When, like, you, you will go outside a building and climb a wall, and then you drop on them. And stuff yeah. like that. So, like, it's this small stuff I learned from Asu, watching like, Asu, Dizzy, all the TSM guys and stuff like that. It's the stuff I picked up from pros. Yeah. And I watched his um, third-person video, and that kind of just shows you how much he actually crouches. He, when nobody is aware of him, like if he knows that the enemy's running away or not firing back at him at the time, he'll stand still and he'll just try his best to land his shots. But then once he knows the enemy's aware of his presence, he'll start crouch spamming, he'll start strafing uh, pretty rapidly. Uh, be doing his best basically to avoid getting hit. And the crouch spamming is something he does a lot. He's basically always doing it. And it is it is a beneficial you know strategy to do because you know it's, it's more beneficial versus certain weapons than others. But you know wingman's probably a good example of that. If people are aiming for your head and you crouch, it's obviously going to miss. Um, so it is it is generally a very useful strategy, but it can mess up your own aim. So you know with all that crouching going up and down the whole time, it can mess up your own aim. I didn't really see a lot of that on your gameplay. It could be something that's worth you know throwing more crouches into your fighting. You know just. Uh, makes up makes it up a little bit just so you know makes yourself harder to hit especially as Ray if you got a small hitbox if you suddenly crouch you know they're gonna miss completely rather than landing any hits on you um overall though uh pretty decent gameplay um the aim is always something you're gonna be constantly kind of working on but if you want to progress through to diamond i think it's your kind of strategy that you need to kind of think about more and the looking around and, and getting information and deciding what your strategy is going to be is going to help you quite a bit for example if there's multiple teams landing in the same area like skyhook um you don't want to be fighting anybody really because you're going to get thirded that's probably one of the biggest things like when you're in platinum you get third fight so much um it, it's probably the biggest issue you're going to face so you need to adapt your play style to kind of you know avoid yourself getting screwed by that basically mm -hmm. but yeah if you, hopefully we do kind of make some progress through the uh in this season i would i will say kind of generally the difficulty has gone up 
I'm not sure why I think Respawn's done something with the matchmaking stuff, and it's, I definitely noticed when they added diamonds in to the platinum mix, it goes from like platinum four, uh, and it includes diamond four as well. That's basically a platinum lobby, basically. Um, so because they added the diamonds in there, the difficulty has gone up quite a bit. But for some reason, last season, um, I noticed the general difficulty there was higher than before. Mm -hmm. um, like there was a friend of mine who consistently got diamond every season, and then last season he ran out of time and didn't manage to make it. Got to like platinum two or one or something like that, and didn't didn't quite make it. A little bit of his own fault for not playing enough, but uh, yeah, it definitely slowed down his progress a lot um, because of the way they've increased the difficulty. Somehow, I'm not sure why, but there are a lot of better players in that rank now for some reason. So it will make it kind of a bit harder. So strategy is probably going to be a best friend for dealing with that sort of thing. There's no point just trying to take every fight you can and, and not thinking about the the reasons behind it. You know, if you if you just randomly run across a team, let's say the game's been pretty quiet, you randomly run across a team and fight them, um, you might get thirded. That's something you always got to bear in mind. And how, how quickly can you end the fight as well? You know how before you had a triple take? If you're just poking at a team at long distance for a long period of time, it's going to attract more attention. So more teams are going to come in and start coming in from different directions you the team might come behind you and start shooting you in the back you know what i mean so in general you want to end your fights very quickly that's again why i mentioned shotguns shoot that mastiff you can put people down very quickly and taking your fights in close range as well you can end the fight very quickly there as well so basically i'd say a general fight in apex if you want to um end it quickly and avoid potentially getting third by Attack at a little bit of range. Um, you know, maybe use a wingman, get somebody cracked or something. Use that time to push up. Then once you're getting close range, uh, do your best to, you know, take your 1v1 situations, deal as much damage as possible, hopefully win, heal up, keep down in people, um, don't get overwhelmed. Uh, just do your best to kind of uh, get 1v1 situation. That's the biggest thing. You don't want to get, you know, in a situation where it's 2v1 or anything like that. Because your teammates will probably be behind you and kind of slacking off. That usually is the case with them. So you just need your 1v1 fights, try to down somebody, if you get, like, if you push up on, on a guy you just got low and he managed to get a bat off and then you run in, you knock him, at that point you, your team has an advantage there because it's now 3v2 instead. So even you just doing a play like that where you actually get one guy can make a pretty big difference. And then you just need to make sure after you've got that guy you don't die as well, because if you die as well then yeah, you, you're equal then. And I, I would say the game has some kind of weird matchmaking where it kind of purrs carries and people who are being carried to get like together so your team is not going to consist of oh three really good players it's going to consist of maybe one or two guys that are carrying somebody else you know so if you're a, if the game kind of i guess puts you as a carry and you die you know your teammates are going to be useless and not do anything you know especially with randoms anyway i'm pretty sure the matchmaking works something similar to that because i've never had a team that is like all good members like i've always had at least one guy that just has no idea what's going on and is just yeah. know, new to the game or something yeah just uh i don't know what that's all about but i'm pretty sure there is some kind of matchmaking there so if you're going to be doing this solo just bear that in mind if if you're in the kind of carry position you know if the game thinks you're kind of more of a carry and you do get a lot of kills and um doing most of the work on your team it won't put you with people that are also going to be really good it'll put you with people that are pretty bad so you have to do the work if you don't um, like if you let's say you trade with someone, you know, that's no good You have to be doing better than the average guy you're up against so if you have a 1v1 fight You have to win that 1v1 fight So obviously aim and movement is going to be pretty essential there and weapon choice is a, is a factor as well If you take a 1v1 fight with him and your weapons suck for close range You know if he has a mastiff and you don't you might lose that fight just because he has better weapons than you that are more suited to that situation and if he does have a mastiff and you don't, um, there are definitely going to be times where you will just lose this because he has, you know, a weapon that is much better in close range. But you, there are ways to like play, like I said, like it, using that door with lifeline, um, using the edge of the door to like jiggle peek and stuff like to get damage out can help you out a little bit. But overall, you're at a major disadvantage if you're fighting someone that does have a shotgun and you don't. So definitely worth bearing in mind. Your weapon choices are going to uh, change around as you make your way through there as well. You know, and up into the high ranks, you know, a lot of close range fights are going to happen, and a lot of people are going to be running weapons that are very good for close range. So if you don't have that, you'll lose the fight just for that reason. They have much better close range than you do, so it's definitely worth you know considering going forward. You know, the type of weapons you're going to use, you won't be using trouble take very much, that's for sure. You know, as you try to make your way up, there. Uh, longer range fights are not super beneficial. 
you might be able to t you know poke at some people and maybe get a single kill or so but you might then get a team coming behind you shooting you in the back because you've been sat there for the past two minutes sniping at people you know mm -hmm. so yeah there's quite a lot to it when you you know think about it as a whole um but yeah do you have any kind of questions about anything we've kind of talked about today oh not really no That's okay not... you're pretty happy with it then yeah all right, so yeah, I would definitely kind of stick to, you know, um, I would probably do aim training pretty consistently, um, especially if you feel like you're not super comfortable with elements of your aim. So if you feel like your flicking is not so great with the wingman, for example, um, you know, practicing your flicking will be beneficial. And at the same time, picking it up more. And remember, slow down. Don't just be try to spam and, and be as fast as possible. Um, Try, try to use the, the guns that are meta, so obviously uh, energy weapons are pretty up there right now, so they're going to be uh, pretty common pickups, but the Prowler is still very good. Um, we kind of saw the Prowler earlier, you could have the opportunity to use it. Still very good, I would say the Vault is easier and more consistent though, so yeah, it, it's good as long as you have the ammo for it. Don't always pick up the Vault, just because energy ammo is still a bit of a problem, you won't always be able to get the energy ammo to kind of support it. Basically, I would say if you're going to use a vault, um, you need to be pretty lucky with ammo or have a lot of materials to grab yourself loads of ammo. Either that or kill loads of people and just take their energy ammo, you know? Mm -hmm. So it won't always be viable, especially if your entire team has, you know, your other two teammates has vaults as well. Energy ammo will probably be a bit of an issue. It does chew through ammo pretty quickly and obviously the ammo is a little bit rarer than usual as well. So, but that stuff in mind when it comes to weapon choices, you can't always run the vault. You, you're going to definitely have situations where you run out of ammo and supplies. So you're going to have to swap out whether you like it or not. All right. Um, so for now, I have kind of work your way through gold, try to get through platinum and remember some of the things we talked about today. If you do experience more issues, you can come back if you feel. Um, but honestly, with, with the kind of stuff I mentioned, especially looking around, that's a pretty big factor. Um, I think you should be able to progress through there pretty well. I will say if you can make it to like eh, Platinum 2 or so, you should be able to make it the full way as long as you keep up what you've been doing the whole time. And you don't need any friends or anything to play with you. If you do play with friends, it may, may be a bit easier because you've got some coordination there. But in general, you, you should be able to make it through there on your own. And you will learn a lot in the process of that as well. It makes you a better player overall if you do manage to grind yourself up to Diamond on your own. Um, one other thing we didn't really touch on much because of the way your games went your team tend to stick together and you didn't lose many teammates until near the you know the end or something or you all died together um there's going to be times where your your teammate might get caught, caught out and die or something uh you have to make the decision whether or not you can recover them and if not you have to just abandon them if you try to recover them let's say the ping in or the yelling at you to recover and you do it and you die as well you're going to lose pretty big points so <clears throat> so it's not really worth it. You have to be able to make your own decision. Okay. Um, my teammate just died. Did he kill anybody in the process? You know, or did he die for free? And no, I'm probably going to be running into three people and I'll get kind of screwed for that. Um, can I, you know, hide somewhere and get the banner after they've left? You know, you have to, these are the things you want to consider. Um, I always, I would say for the most part, I usually try to get back in, you know, near the end of the banner timer within like 20 seconds or so, somewhere around that region try to make my way in and get the banner because teammates are pretty important especially going into diamond plus so when you're facing you know master and predators and stuff like that other diamond players the skill level there is very good so you basically have to play together as a team you can't be you know splitting up very far from each other and uh getting isolated and killed and things like that you, and also i wouldn't really recommend trying if you did get to diamond by the way i wouldn't recommend trying to get to master without a team because you need that coordination, you need to be able to work together. You can't have people walking off, you know, like that Octane did in your game when you was moving towards trade, just running off and dying like that. Because players are pretty good there, so you can't be, you know, making mistakes like that. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, um, it's a pretty big factor. I say a lot of people do run in, try to grab banners, die in the process, and then lose like maximum points. If you don't get any kills and you don't uh, get top 10 like squads, you'll lose full points. So that's something you never want to do. If your teammate dies and you you know, you know don't think you can kill the guys or you don't think you can recover it, you have to leave them behind or come back later and get it. Those are decisions you got to make sometimes. It's not ideal, but uh, sometimes your teammates will mess up and get caught and die and there's not much you can do about it. Just try to recover them if possible. If not, get out of there. Focus on yourself because if you die very early in the game, you're going to lose major points and it will set you back a lot so 
you, you probably you might have experienced that yourself where you did gain some traction and you made some progress but then you go back down again it can be kind of due to this, the sort of decisions you make if you you know trying to save teammates they're doing dumb stuff by trying to grab the banner and you die in the process you know it's not really worth you, you gotta sometimes just play solo i'm kind of rat it over being uh, go for placements and try to get some kills near the end as well all right, so I think we kind of covered everything. Um, aim training is something that uh, you should consider doing more on a more consistent basis if you feel like your aim is not consistent enough. So if you feel like, okay, I have days where I'm good and I'm bad, like that's not really what you should expect from your aim. You should kind of have the same results most of the time. Uh, well, at least when you're warmed up anyway, once you're warmed up, you should always kind of know exactly what to expect from your aim. It shouldn't be sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's not. Um, it, if it's not that, if that's not the case, you need to more consistently pick up aim training. So do it like thirty minutes a day or something, or before you play Apex, throw in like thirty minutes in there. Um, definitely worth considering, and over the long run as well, um, it will be beneficial to aim train, you know, for a long period of time because it will make you more consistent. And consistency is probably one of the biggest key uh, key things to being a good player. If you if you if your aim is very consistent, you know what to expect out of it. You know, like it's at a pretty good level, um, and you don't really generally miss your shots on people. That's kind of what you want to be going for. You can't have times where, yeah, there's, you, sometimes you laser people and then there's times where you completely miss, you know? You have to know what to expect at yourself. Yeah, and I when I was uh, competitively playing it, like Overwatch, every time before a tournament, I would always, like an hour in aim training, and, and always do better, even though I never played characters that require aim. Just having that felt useful, so it makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much always beneficial in any kind of shooter game. Whether or not you do actually do a lot of shooting or not, it, uh, it does help you out. But yeah, we'll leave this here. Um, hopefully you learned something today. Yeah. That's good. Right. So it's just kind of down to you to put things into practice now. If you want to progress through the, uh, the information we kind of went through, especially um, looking around, um, thinking about zones, um, decisions whether or not you can save teammates, that kind of stuff are going to be pretty substantial factors on whether or not you keep making gains there's going to be times where your teammates are going to die or maybe one guy dies and it's going to put you a, a bit of a disadvantage you have to play accordingly based on the circumstances so if your teammates do get screwed um you, you have to play accordingly you can't always just run and try to save them because you it will mess you up so yeah bear that in mind for the future hopefully now you can kind of make some progress through you shouldn't have too much of an issue getting diamond i think with those tips they do cover a lot of the uh, like very common problems that i see um, where people are kind of stuck, it's because of that sort of stuff mainly. Um, get, you have to think about getting information about what kind of things. If, if you don't know how to deal with a certain situation, you just kind of run in and hope for the best. That's not what we want. You have to be very calculated about what you're going to do. If you're going to take a fight with a t certain team, you know, what if you get third party? You have to know what you're going to be able to do. You know, third fighting happens a lot in, in Platinum. So any kind of decision you make, you have to consider third party in as a potential problem, you know, if you do go ahead with that. All right. So our macro order is complete for now. It's just practice time, really. Uh, if you need any extra help in future, I will be around. But um, if your goal is to reach at least diamond, you shouldn't have too much of an issue, I think. All right. Okay. No extra questions before we uh, kind of put it to an end. No, I don't have anything on my end. All right, buddy. Um, so overall, pretty decent stuff. Um, it's mostly strategy stuff, I would say, with yourself. Um, aim seems to be okay. I'm not sure about some weapons. Didn't really see shotguns so much. Didn't really see wingman. So I'm not really super familiar with your, what your aim's like with those. But yeah, just bear in mind the, the, those kind of general tips I gave you about them. You got to kind of take them slow, especially with the mastiff. Aiming down sight super beneficial because it increases the uh, tightness of your pellets. So super beneficial. Not only that, it kind of helps with uh, giving yourself a good reference point for your eyes to work with. You know, when it comes to aim as well. If you can't see your, your sights very well, it can definitely uh, negatively affect your aim because you have no idea where you know you're gonna hit. All right. So I'll uh, see you later. It's been nice meeting you, yeah, and nice I wish you. you all the best in future. You too. All right. See you later.